if they're always happening. Not be perfect, but is that not more reliable than relying on a 1,500-year-old um, book? I mean, you could say, you know, we weren't there, uh, you know, when the hydrogen and helium gas in space formed the sun and then rocks and debris shot off from the sun and formed the earth. No, we weren't there when that happened. But uh, were, were you there, you know, uh, when 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 Genesis allegedly took place? I mean, were you there to see that? And what models can we build that show that that happened? Well, we have, we have like, we have the proof, like, li literally people wrote it down. Did they write it down when it happened, or they did they did they write it down hundreds of years later? I mean, the oldest manuscripts we have of the Old Testament, and then we've got the Dead Sea Scrolls, which are, um, let's see, they're about they're about twenty three hundred years old or something like that. Even then, though, the be the oldest manuscripts we have are still thousands of years later after most of the events took place, like um, the Exodus and um, even further back than that, you know, the story of, of Noah's flood. And then even further back than that, you know, um, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the Tower of Babel, all of these things, we don't have writing, we don't have text, we don't have manuscripts from that time we don't even have manuscripts from that century we, we don't have manuscripts of people writing down those stories until over a thousand years later so it's not like we actually have eyewitness accounts written in some stones no we have we have far removed manuscripts from the when those events were supposed to take place and even more suspiciously than that we also have manuscripts older than the ones we have of the old testament of other stories like the story of utnapishtim and, and Atrahasis and these other flood myths written by Mesopotamians and um, the Sumerians and their flood myths. We have older versions of their flood myths than we do the flood myth of Noah. Um, so, it, you know, really we have problems if we try to look for, you know, eyewitness accounts. We don't have eyewitness accounts of, of any of that stuff, but we have better reason to believe the flood myth of Atrahasis and Utnapishtim than we do the flood myth of Noah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not an expert on the times of when everything's written, but um generally um most from what I have researched um like o only certain people wrote down the things in the Bible. It wasn't just random people. Um they they had to be special, uh, so um, so in in certain parts like some some parts of the Bible it's poetry, some is historical, some are biographical by, by yeah biographical uh, and autobiographical so, stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah, I like So saying. it's like, but all the stuff that um, like the Bi so. For instance, um, 10 years ago, the Bible said this, and then a couple, couple, and then now scientists have actually shown that the Bible was right about its claims. And like, and everything in the geography and history, it's just, I don't know, it's just, like, it's, it, it makes too much sense for me to not believe it. Um... So are you referring to uh, some of the examples Ray Comfort gives in his uh, video of scientific foreknowledge in the Bible? Is that what you're kind of referring to, some of those things? Yeah, and just um, other things, like we'd have to go into specifics. Well, uh, geography in the Bible is pretty good. It's not bad uh, by any means, um, but that's not that doesn't really prove that it's divine. I mean, most of the, uh, we've got the Iliad, right? Uh, the Iliad of Homer, it's, uh, it's Greek mythology. Its geography is pretty accurate too. And I can't remember, um, it's on the tip of my tongue, but there was a city mentioned in the Iliad that we didn't know existed until relatively recently. And then we found it. Um, and, and it was mentioned in the Iliad. 
Um, did that confirm that the Iliad is an accurate historical um, account of, of some historical event? No, I mean, it's just uh, it mentioned a real place, and then that real place was lost, and then we found it years later. That has mm-hmm. happened with some cities mentioned in the Bible. I would go out on a limb and say that every city mentioned in the Bible was a real historical place, even if we haven't found it yet. And that's just because they, the people writing it would have no reason to create fictional places you know, on Earth um, to have stories take place in when they could have them take place in real stories. I mean, it's just like... Uh, yeah, the Spider-Man comics, right? They, you know, they use real places. New York City, um, you know, Harlem, um, you know, the, the uh, Hell's Kitchen, you know, all these places. Those are real places, but it doesn't confirm that, you know, Spider-Man is a historical event. Um, and, and, yeah, there's some of that in the Bible. Um, it doesn't really have, it, it doesn't really mention anything very groundbreaking. I know Ray Comfort said, um, his his favorite example was um, the hand washing um, in the Old Testament. It mentions something about washing yourself before you take place in some you, you partake in some ritual. Um, mm-hmm. It mentions washing in a river, um, and that's that's about it. Um, that's not really divine knowledge. It doesn't you know. Um, it's not really uh, that incredible. I, I actually did a video response to Ray Comfort's video on that, um, and there wasn't anything that groundbreaking. Um. But like, like, I'm not specifically talking about just the geograph geographical pe- places, but like, they even get the the people right too. Um, all the tribes and the kings and everything. Well, I mean, I don't know that. Um, I, I know the uh, I know the Philistines existed. Uh, we found that out later. But again, I you know I wouldn't be surprised if every person mentioned in the Bible was a real person. I don't see why they would make them up. Um, yeah. That, that to me that doesn't really prove that the Bible's uh, theology is true it just proves that it's based in some real places and real events um even that like okay so the exodus i believe that the exodus happened but the version we have in the bible is most likely a tall tale um you you, you do know the story of johnny appleseed it's an american mythology jonathan chapman was a real person but he didn't plant every apple seed in america you know he didn't plant every apple tree um, yeah. It's a tall tale, uh, and so I mean I assume the same is true for the Bible. Probably most of the events that it talks about took place, and there probably a lot of them were real people. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that the exact text we have in the Bible is historically accurate. Okay, and then um, uh, so like it it predicts things about Jesus coming true. Um, years before it happens. Well, so do the Harry and, Potter books. Yeah, but what, what do you mean? There's prophecies like in the uh, Harry Potter books that are fulfilled later in the Harry Potter books. Uh, there's yeah, also but, prophecies in Star Wars that are fulfilled later in Star Wars. Same with the, the Narnia series. Um, it's yeah. not that extraordinary that you'll have prophecies in the Old Testament of the Bible that are fulfilled in the New Testament of the Bible. Yeah, so it's kind of, it's, it's easy to think of it as fairy tale like that. Like like you're saying all these books are, they're made up. So, fairy so, tales, more so tall tales. Yeah, so of, of course it's kind of come true. But like these were real, in the, 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 the people in the Bible, they were, real people and the things that happened in the Bible happened over time in real life. So like if so this is this is for just an example. If I said that something was gonna come true in ten years and then in ten years it comes true no. that would that would be like 
a miracle. That, that would be divine. No, that would be prophecy. That yeah, be, yeah. You know, an accurate prophecy. So, um, so talking that, about with the messianic prophecies. Now, interesting thing about that is a very complicated topic. But yeah, there are some prophecies in the Old Testament that Jesus definitely fulfilled in the New Testament. But a lot of them weren't originally intended to be prophecies. Um, yeah, a lot of Jews... Some Jews believe that, I don't, I don't want to get into Judaism, but a lot of Jews do not believe that Jesus fulfilled the prophecies in the Old Testament um, because it wasn't, some of them weren't even prophecies. Um, I have a list somewhere. I don't, I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, but uh, the New Testament, when it was written, they definitely wrote Jesus to fulfill these prophecies. And they also wrote him to parallel other characters in the Old Testament. I mean, Jesus is a parallel of Adam. He's a parallel of um, Moses. He's a parallel of Joshua and, and a lot of other, um, even, even a little bit of, um, um, of uh, Jonah. Um, there's a lot of that. But it, we don't have, like, we do have historical uh, evidence that Jesus was a real person but we don't have historical evidence that he did the things that the new testament said that he did as far as like fulfilling these prophecies it just says that he did in the new testament so there's no reason why someone couldn't have come in and just wrote these stories to fulfill these prophecies because they wanted those prophecies to be fulfilled right um well it's just it's not like just an average joe would be writing the the books uh, well, so, no, it would have yeah. been a very literate uh, Greek citizen, yeah. possibly. And like, and the people back then, they they took scripture very seriously, um, and uh, like like the the Jewish people, they um, it was very sacred to them. And so when they would write it down, well, yeah. they wouldn't just let anybody do it, uh, and then. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is um, the people that wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, etc., they were people who uh, who saw it. They they were eyewitnesses. Well, they said, yeah. They did. Like whether or not someone believes what they're saying is true. It, doesn't mean that it's not true like they so they wrote it they wrote it down they they, they saw jesus do this stuff and they wrote it down and they said they saw jesus do yeah, stuff that yeah they, they there's hundreds of gospels and, yeah. and other new testament stories you know that aren't in the bible yeah but um, the, the thing is the, the the people that wrote the what they saw that they believed that they saw this right they most of the most of the disciples they died for what they were claiming to be true well uh we don't really have um historical evidence of that happening the sources that um christians will point to to say that the uh the disciples were murdered for their beliefs the sources are non-canonical new testament books um we don't have external uh proof that any of these people were actually murdered for their beliefs um like we don't have any non-biblical books showing that that happened we just have biblical books new testament books and not even canonical biblical books they're non-canonical biblical books so christians don't even believe that they're accurate but christians will cite them to say that the disciples were murdered for their faith so so let me try to understand what you just said when you said non-biblical, that's in the sense of people claiming that it's inspired, but it's not. And it's inspired, and then the Council of Nicaea didn't accept those books and didn't put them in the canon. Uh, the, the Catholics didn't like those books, so they didn't let them be canon. Um, yeah. So just for me and your sake, let's, let's call those unbiblical. Unbiblical okay. books. Okay. Um... Uh, yeah, they're uh, uncanon they're books. Christian legends. Yeah, so those those would be historical books that we could look at. So, like any Christian that 
that is well read, they'll only say that the books in the Bible are inspired by God. And all the other books are histor historical books that are good to... Well, historical either because they have... Um... They have Jesus saying things that uh, would would be considered um, um, sacrilege. Um, they have Jesus doing and saying a lot of things that Christians do not want to be historical. They do not Christians do not believe that these non canonical, non biblical books are historical. So really, nobody accepts them. Um, but Christians will use them as a source because they are the only sources. And you can fact check me on this: the only sources yeah. of these disciples of Jesus being murdered for their faith okay you can go fact check me on that too um, okay uh i'm not saying uh that's wrong because like people believe what they want to believe um well people shouldn't just believe what they want to believe yeah um so so if it is so we got like two scenarios either the disciples didn't see Jesus doing all this stuff and they were lying or they did see it and they died for their faith. Um, well, we don't know that they died for their faith, though. That's, uh, I mean, that's a very, uh, it's very common rhetoric to hear Christians talk about, but you don't actually have sources of that happening unless you want to accept these non-canonical books that are considered uh, sacrilegious. Or uh, heretical, even. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but just because one... Let me try to phrase this. Just because one book... Um, so, they're discredited because heresy, right? Um, but, yeah. but just because... All, so only only certain things are absolutely inspired by God, but just because other things in those books happen doesn't make it heresy. Like the things that happen in the so. Well, the, I mean, the, the, the I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, mostly the Catholic Church decided what's heretical and what's not, and Protestants still run yeah. with that. But so thanks for watching, everybody. If you're uh, not subscribed to me, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, like the video, hit the bell icon, and, and if you're not subscribed to Noah Bai, go ahead and subscribe to his channel. Click the like button on his part of this video and click the bell icon so you'll be notified whenever he uploads some new videos.